quitting smoking as a cop treatment. The connection between smoking and cop. Not every person who smokes develops chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, cop, and not every person who has cop is a smoker. However, many people with cop do have a history of smoking. In fact, the American Lung Association reports that 85 to 90 percent all copped cases are caused by smoking. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention (CDC), smoking also accounts for up to eight out of ten copped-related deaths. If you have copped and you smoke, it's time to quit. Getting information from your doctor, attending counseling sessions, and taking medications can help. Why quit? If you're a smoker who's been diagnosed with COPD, it's natural to feel a range of negative emotions, including discouragement, anger, or depression. Since the damage to your lungs has already been done, you may think you might as well go ahead and enjoy your cigarettes. You may even think that smoking won't make any difference now. Although understandable, this reasoning is far from the truth. Even if you already have COPD, you can still benefit from quitting. In fact, smoking cessation is the only reliable treatment to slow the progression of your copt and help you maintain the lung function you have left. Stopping smoking can also help you avoid serious flare-ups of your condition. Copt flare-ups are frightening and dangerous. They can lead to negative outcomes, such as hospitalization, treatment failure, and even death. It's important to do everything in your power to avoid them. That includes tossing your cigarettes, pipes, and cigars. If you're a smoker with COPD, you can noticeably improve your health by putting your cigarettes away for good. How to Stop Smoking According to the CDC, nearly 7 out of 10 adult smokers in the United States report wanting to quit. However, many struggle to actually kick the habit. Several strategies are available to help you quit for good. Healthcare Provider Intervention This isn't the classic kind of intervention, where your loved ones plead with you to quit. A healthcare provider intervention is a brief, more casual conversation with your nurse or doctor. They commonly explain how smoking interacts with your current health problems to lower your quality of life. They also explain how smoking puts you at risk of life-threatening complications. People who've had this type of interaction have a small but significant advantage when it comes to quitting smoking. If you want to quit, ask your doctor about the benefits of stopping smoking and the risks of continuing. Learning the facts may give you the motivation you need to become tobacco-free. Group Counseling Group counseling gives you the best of both worlds. You can to listen to experienced speakers who can offer advice and techniques for quitting and managing relapses. You can also take advantage of the group setting to give and receive support from others who are in your shoes. Seeing others in your group stop smoking successfully can help strengthen your own resolve. If group counseling doesn't appeal to you, ask your doctor about one-on-one -on -one counseling options. The CDC offers free help in the form of a helpline, 800 Quit Now, and an online guide. Medications the most popular kind of medication regimens for people who want to stop smoking are nicotine replacement therapies. Nicotine replacement therapies can help you manage your withdrawal symptoms and control your cravings. You can get nicotine replacement from chewing gum, patches that adhere to your skin, lozenges, and even sprays. If the replacement therapy isn't helping as much as you'd like, you might want to talk to your doctor about adding an antidepressant. This type of combined therapy has been shown to help some people quit. Cold Turkey Some people are able to put the cigarettes down and walk away without any medications or support groups. This suggests the cold turkey approach can work, but you have a better chance of succeeding if you know what you're getting yourself into. Whether you use counseling or medications or try to quit cold turkey, these tips can help, set a quit date and stick to it. Avoid stressful situations or situations that lead to cravings. Expect withdrawal symptoms, such as anxiety, irritability, depression, and food cravings. Plan in advance how you will handle the symptoms, and remember they won't last forever. Make a list of the things you want from life.
it's not enough to simply stop a behavior. For lasting change to occur, it's important to replace the negative behavior with a new healthier one. Seek support from friends and family. Turn to them when you feel close to relapse. Surround yourself with people you trust and who will give you support. Support others who are trying to quit. You can quit for good. Giving up a long-time habit like cigarette smoking isn't fun or easy, but it can dramatically slow the progression of your copt and enhance your quality of life. Schedule an appointment to speak with your doctor about quitting. Ask them about the benefits of stopping your tobacco use and the risks of continuing. They can also give you information about smoking cessation support, such as counseling services and medications. Recruit your friends and family members to support you. And remember, avoiding tobacco will get easier with time. Please like, share, subscribe my channel, and do not forget to press the bell icon so you will get the notification when I upload a video. And also, we are giving away free ebook to our first 10,000 subscribers. Please click the link below on the description box.